Okay. Okay, I think we are actually live. How about that? All right, the Tetrich brothers are going to have to turn you off. And hey, zero viewers out there, welcome. This is the Week in Review. And I was going to have this plane, but it's not ready yet, so... What else do we have? What else do we have here? Just to, oh, that's not my plane, that's Kevin's. Oh, we don't like that. What do we got here? Oh, look at, this is a plane. I know something about this plane. I don't even know what this flight is, but it is a flight. So while we look at this, I will get this camera ready for the next view because I'm unprepared. Look, am I by myself? I might be by myself. And I've obviously forgotten something. That is hilarious. Okay, so uh, let's see. HD with SD. Oh, yes. Okay, so here we go. We can zoom in on, you guys can't see this, preparing the next shot. I was going to have a flight of the Explorer, but uh, it's not ready yet. And I don't know what this is. I just thought I'd have something playing while I mess around getting the next shot ready. So the week I... In review of flying, got to fly lots this week, even though it's supposedly a lockdown. We do practice our social distancing and keep about 20 feet apart. The two other people I fly with were like having our little stations 20 feet apart. Although I did notice when I was talking to Andy today that we were actually closer than, we were probably just barely six feet apart, so... Uh, Probably didn't do that all that well. And that is Kevin right there. This is before social distancing. This is before the pandemic, this video here. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But am I ready? No. Okay, let's see. Is this one of the ones that won't fly? Yeah. This is when my ESC was broken, I guess. Here we go. Let's see, let's see what it's like when the ESC is broken. Yeah, so I did get in the air, but no, that's not a very good example of a good auto launch. And let's go to the end here. Did this get finished copying? It did. Okay, so let's go back to the end. This is more recent. Oh, that's flying my quad. That's this. That's flying my quad in the backyard. No, we don't want to see that. Me testing things out. No. That's all me flying. I guess this isn't from last week. What a bummer. Oh. This is the Colossus. Oh no, this is the quad with the VTX. This is what it's like to fly with a shitty VTX. Can you imagine flying with that? Okay, here. This is my quad flying, folks. It's the worst ever. <laughs> Look. <laughs> I haven't flown in a while. Oh, oh, oh. I go up. Oh, do I go back down? Yes, I do. Whoa. Oh, crash. Do I fly out of it? No. Okay. Yeah, that's hilarious. Oh, my God. I hope the desktop audio is really low. I'm sorry. Okay. Let's switch to the 
view I was going to go to anyway. So back to where we were. Uh, number seven. There we go. Hello. Hello, folks out there in the world. So today we flew the Twin Explorer. Here's the wing for it. You may. This is the, so uh, I crashed it. I lost control and I don't have any DVR of the crash, which really sucks. So I um, don't know what to say. I put a card in that I've never, it was full, the DVR was full. So I put a card in and I have a whole box of empty ready to go cards in the field with me. Anyway, so you can see here, the damage was quite substantial. It's a total loss for the fuselage. It um, was completely busted inside there, as you can see. Look at that. Just complete total exposing of the flight controller, ripping. This is where the wing, of course, goes. It split the nose here. The battery's still in it. So... I was going to show some DVR today of this when I decided to make this live stream to uh, show today's flights, but we don't have them, so there was no DVR today. This is the battery I used, and then in order to get the weight right, the CG, which I talked about before, Andy, my friend, gave me these. This is an excellent idea, so I've ordered some. These are car balance weights on Amazon. And then I've just stuck Velcro on them. Each one, each one of these is one ounce or 28 grams. So, let me sit down so I'm a little lower. Okay. Each one is one ounce or 28 grams. And so I put 10 of these on here, maybe even more. I wanted about 260 to 270 grams. So these are all nose weights. That, and so thank you, Andy, for those. And when I get some, I'll pay them back. I'll either give them these back or give them the other kind that I ordered. But these are really nice. And I didn't even use the sticky side because I was planning on giving them back to them. I just put Velcro on them. Okay, so I used four, eight, ten. So 28, 280 grams of nose weight. And that might be a little too much. Probably could have done one with one less. But that's not why it crashed. Not because it was too nose heavy. I don't know why it crashed. I think it lost signal and fail safe. It, I lo totally lost control. Look, you look at the front, this wood dowel here, which by the way, that, that part of it held out really good. It was, it hit a tree at the very end of its flight. And uh, probably if we wouldn't have hit that tree, it might not have broken this. But we definitely hit the ground with some force because the little wood dowel went right into there like that it was pretty pretty good so i thought since this fuselage is a total loss and now that i don't have a dvr of the crash and that the other dvr thing in the other flight i was going to show of this thing flying while i talked so uh is rendering still I just put two videos together, so now you can see what this is like inside here. Maybe I should put this like this over here under this, and let's see if we can get the view going. Oh, there we go. 
So let's switch to this view, overhead view. You can see what a mess we have where the flight controller is. And it looks like, I'm going to put my glasses on. It looks like we may have bent some pins here. So let's use this servo cables to bend them back so they're straight before we take them out. There's two other bent ones. Let's see if we can get those just a little straightened out there. Okay. So I'm not going to take any of this stuff off. What I'm going to do is just disconnect right here. Just the elevator. And the rudder. And then we can take this whole thing off. We can take it off by putting some... Oh, no more alcohol. Oh, crash. There we go. There's a whole bunch of alcohol. A little too much. Some little droplets in there. Oh, you can't see that. We should zoom this out a little bit, huh? There we go. Here, we'll put this over that. <laughs> okay. There we go. Uh, let's get this buzzer off of here. Okay. And let's clip this zip tie. Okay. All this mess. Oh, the receiver. The receiver's underneath. So we need to cut the receiver out. We do that by carefully cutting along there and just getting the antenna off of the tape. Like so. The next time I build this, I'm going to build it with an R9. Okay, so inside of here, is the receiver. And what we're going to do is unplug it. Get the antenna out. Whoops. There we go. And we're going to unplug this. I'm going to pull that plug through there. There we go. So this mess is our flight controller. And it's the uh, Maytech F411 Wink. And I just generally leave all this on. This is the second rebuild now. Or the second time. I'm going to get this thing to fly. <laughs> and it does fly. Oh, let's see if the video is playing. Let's go back to uh, this. Oh, let wait. Whoops. Let's go back to this and let's go to videos. Here, it's all done. Let's go back to resolve. It's all completed. So what we can do is, sorry about the picture view in my crotch there. Okay, let's get this something like, why can't I, okay, I guess there's some sidebars there, that's why. 
All right, we'll put this. How am I going to get this on the window? I know. Let's not do that. Let's go back to this view. What is that view? Sorry, folks, for me screwing around with this. No. Oh, I lost it. That was the document camera. There, we got that. Let's add a source to this document. Let's add, uh, here, let's put this in here so you can see what I'm doing. There you go. Okay, so this is how we do this. We're going to add a source, and that source is going to be a media source. And I'm just going to call this uh, flight. Okay, and then browse for a local file, and it's right here. Open. Okay. Where is it? Flight. Oh, it won't start playing until we switch. Okay, so let's go back over here, and then let's see what happens. Where is flight? set the size of flight. Okay, never mind that. So here's what we'll do. Uh, we'll add a desktop source. Can you capture? say left. I'll just put a right. No. Center two. No. We'll just add existing. Center. Okay. And then we'll just shrink it down. We'll put it over here. Okay. And then in that center, we're going to play the video. Sorry, folks. I'll get it together. Come on. Here, we'll make it full screen on this. And then, okay, let's go. There we go. And let's go back. I don't know what scene this is. God, I wish it would put the name of the scene in OBS that I've picked. Desktop center. We've got to get. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Let's go back to where we were, cutting up the thing. So this flight that you see there while we're doing stuff is... Uh, here, maybe we'll turn it up just a little bit. I hope it's not too loud. Let's see. It's got a little status. -y. So this is probably very late winter, middle of March, end of March middle of March before the lockdown. Okay, so we're back here. Let's get moving because I only have so so much time. We're going to take this apart. That's our mission today. I'll cover the, finish covering this thing up here. Okay, so we got to get you and the reason is so you can see the inside how I attach the carbon fiber boom to this and how I'm going to get it back. So we're going to just cut all the way along here. Oh dear. So I couldn't, now I'm putting it in hold so I can get my, I, I put it in altitude hold so I could uh, get
get in my chair with my goggles on because it didn't auto launch. Today it auto launched perfectly. Of course it crashed. Okay, so this thing is very solidly constructed. <sighs> oh, look, now you can see how I've done it in there. You can see the foam in between that's glued to this part. Didn't really get glued very much there, but it's still very solid. Ugh. In fact, it's so solid I can't get it apart. And I am going to build it the same way again. That wing crash is not a usual way to crash it. Just put all this Velcro on there today for this for the um, for the CG weight. Okay, wow, this was a good con construction. I'll tell you that. I'm very impressed with my constructive abilities because it's really a pain to take it apart, which means. It'll take a good crash, I'm hoping. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. This is the best I've ever constructed this boom. Oh, that one's a solid piece. And then it's just, okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to put some alcohol on here. In fact, what we're going to do is put some good amounts of alcohol on there and we're going to let it soak in we're going to recover all these pieces there's no reason to throw away good pieces of wood I can help it Just put some alcohol on here. I shouldn't waste too much of this alcohol though because it's hard to come by these days. Pandemic and all. In fact, they limit you on how much you can buy. Good thing I have about four or five bottles in stock here. Okay. Well, so as you can see from the flight in the lower right corner, the, um, the Twin Explorer does fly. So I don't know why I'm having such a hard time. Maybe this isn't worth getting this stuff off. This hot glue is really good stuff, especially on wood. Well, what about this stuff? Did it break loose down here? It's all very well. I expected this plane to last longer. And it did. It basically only lasted three flights. So that's pretty bad. I'm ruining the tail here.
can start to see the construction of it. bit of alcohol and it will release eventually. So you basically just want to get the 3D printed parts all cleaned off. Then it'll be ready for a new one. And I should have made some measurements of the foam pieces as I built them. Okay. Okay. Some of this stuff is hard to get off, I will admit. But, so, this is the beauty of hot glue, though. So let's look at our flight here. We're seven minutes into our flight, and I still haven't gotten this apart. So it takes at least one flight to get the tail taken apart and ready for reconstruction. But right there, we're almost ready. I don't really want to get that glue off of there. That glue's fine. And even after dousing the whole thing with alcohol, it's still holding on, so. There we go, look at, see how it peels off? Get enough alcohol in the right spot. It will peel off. Okay, so there is the deconstructed tail. Boom. Let's get, let's see, let's get the trash out of the way. Let's not throw away anything. Last time I threw away the OLED screen. So let's not throw away the GPS. Which was embedded in the I will use some alcohol to get some glue off of that too. Oh, here, it's peeling off mostly. Let's set that over here. So, this is trash. I want to get a different trash can. So, here it begins the epic journey of me trying to land this plane. Is this the one where I actually land it? No, I go around a couple, at least one more time. I, I'm going to save that piece, that piece, that, that, and all the rest of this is trash. Really too bad that I lost the D 
DVR of the crash. So the last two crashes of this thing that have been total destructive crashes where I've had to rebuild the fuselage. The last one, the motor came off. <laughs> so anyway, there it is. That was really boring. I thought it might be more interesting and more lessons learned. Well, the lesson learned is, is the construction technique that I've used for building this is pretty solid. I'll give it that. Let's just look and see if our deconstruction technique can be improved. Let's use the last of this bottle. Let's see if we can go along here and save this dowel without too, spending too much of our time. It sticks on really well, so I don't know if we can. It's the beauty of using good quality hot glue. It's the beauty and the curse. <laughs> See, I can save this dowel. The question is, is how much time do you want to spend to save it? It costs a dollar. And the answer is not too much time. But the thing is, is if I can get most of it off, Here, what's left on it? Right. Because we're just going to be re gluing it. It's glued on that good in the first place. Right. Pretty good. Get some of this weight off. Am I still trying to land? Yep. I'm still going around trying to land. But I still have more than 3.5 volts per cell, so. Okay. That's a savable wood dowel. Especially for a plane that I'm going to crash again, probably. Look at this one. Of course, if I cut too much of the wood off, I'll take away all that strength, idiot. stuff like crazy. Yes, it will. Okay. So we'll reuse these. Are we still flying? Yeah. 3.51. Now it's really time for me to land. So, the, I don't know if you've noticed, but this thing, and that flight at least, had very nice rudder authority due to the differential thrust. In this flight that I had today that crashed, that caused this mess that you can see in front of you. Um, oh, 
There was the landing. Let's watch that again. There we go. We're going to go around for the last turn. Base leg. Oh no, that's downwind. Oh no, that's, uh, yeah, downwind. Now we're on base, short base. There's the base leg. Now we're going to turn towards final. Oh, wait, did I rewind it too far back? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Forget what I said. Okay. Uh, no? Okay. That is a missed approach again. That's just... That's just, uh... Find it. There we go. Okay, so here we go. This is the landing, right? This is where we land, right? We come down here. Okay. So now we're on downwind. Now we're turning base. 32 meters. Oh no, this is downwind this way because we're going to land. Okay. We're going to land up that way. So now we're on downwind. Downwind. Turning base. 34 meters. Let's watch the throttle. 60%. Okay, now I'm cutting back on the throttle. There's no flaps on this. No flaps program. And here we come. Here we come in for the final approach. And we want to miss the mud patch right there. Oh, man, we did it. Yes, that was not too bad. Not too bad of a landing at all. I'd say. So, yeah. There. So, let's find... What is this? Why didn't I have the other things copied over here? The more recent flight. Okay, so let's find... I thought I had the INAV. Oh, shit. My book? No. Sorry, okay, let's switch it back. I'm looking, look at all, all these videos. Another successful flight for the rattletrap. Oh, something's playing. Oh, it's still playing. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. You can hear me talking. That's hilarious. Okay, let's find the videos that I had. God damn it. Let's go to this. Let's go. I swear. Videos. Where was that? This one? Okay, here. Aero storm flight. Aero air mode. Let's do this one. Okay, so first of all, I think that we get... Oh, it's going to come in over the network. So will it play? I don't know if it's going to play. Oh, here we go. Okay, so... This I'll put back in the other form, but let's get to... Okay, here we go. We're going to have a good launch, right? Yep. So we're going to arm it. Armed. This is a good launch. This is what a good launch looks like. There we go. Look at that. Look at that nice angle. It just climbs, climbs, climbs. This is the side view, of course. And we're flying. And we got some smudge on the lens. So this is one of the first flights where I'm like learning um, air mode. I know that sounds funny, but I've flown a little bit in manual mode before. But air mode is really the way to fly. 
Why, excuse me. So. There I am. There we were down there. Now it takes a dive. I learned I got a I learned today how to do a spin and keep my attitude up. But on this one no no can do. God that smudge on the lens really bothers me. That sucks. Still no HD folks. Still still no HD. Desktop audio too loud. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. There we go. I don't know what it sounds like. I wonder if I can hear it from here. No. I need to figure out the output, audio output of, of uh, OBS. So I can listen in the headphones. But okay, there's our flight out, and uh, that's the big blue river over there on the, on the right, on the left. And this, I have a mission plan to go all the way out, out there, where that road is leading out there. I call it the big blue loop, and then it comes back around the other side. But I don't have that mission programmed in here yet. And... Um, also, I need to take this bar off. It bothers me. I don't need it. I want the up and down is what I want. So the weather today, you can see the temperature inside the, inside the uh, barometer is 29 degrees Celsius, but the weather is probably closer to about 23 degrees to 20 to 23 degrees Celsius outside, and the wind is... I can't remember. But it's pretty strong, like 10 to 12 miles an hour. If I remember correctly. Just aloft, down close to the ground, there was hardly any wind. The winds aloft were about 10 to 12. And I believe they were out of the south. I should look, which way did I launch? I didn't pay attention. So I'm just cruising around in air mode, and this is pretty much one of the very first times that I really cruised around in this little iNav Aero, flight test Aero wide pod, in air mode. So there we are. There I am, right down there. While I'm doing the buzz flying by. It's nice to hear yourself fly by. When you fly out that way, you don't hear yourself. You're just gone. But the sound from this VTX is just terrible. One of these days I might learn how to do some... Excuse me, I'm yawning like crazy. Audio editing. So this was from, I believe, Tuesday, no, Thursday, Thursday, April 30th, 2020. And the wind wasn't very high, now that I think about it. It was calm at the ground and probably only 5 to 10 miles an hour aloft. And this plane is untuned and it's made out of foam board. So it does bounce around a little bit. But I like to do this loop looking out the side. Nice view there. Spring is coming, or spring is here. You can see that the colors have changed to much greener than they were just a few weeks ago. You can an iNav, by the way. Uh, that wasn't a three. Uh, that wasn't a hold mode, but 
and but in hold mode I have it turning right so that the camera is looking the same way it's turning the side auxiliary camera and you can do that uh, you can make it left in the iNav config in the CLI you can tell it to, to hold left and turn left So what I think I do here is go and cruise down to, yeah, put it in the air mode. Still not going to break between those trees. Still not that gutsy. I'm 62 meters high. What am I saying? Not even close to the trees. Maybe I am going with the wind here. It's going pretty fast, 91 kilometers an hour. You really got to pull back and use elevator when you turn if you want to get any tur decent turning radius, short turning radius. Sometimes I try to follow that road down and then make a right, like a 90 degree turn right here, and then whiz by us. Those are. That's me right there that block blur that's my car this is a social distancing you can see see there's Kevin probably I bet Kevin's here Andy's here and I'm here so like Andy's car is up here Kevin's car is way over here my car is here and then all these other people are doing shit walking their dogs. Anyway, okay. Yeah, there's people walking their dogs. I didn't mean to buzz them. Oh, there's an airplane. Did you see that? I think it was a cub or something. Not, I mean, an airplane being one of our airplanes. I did some chasing of the planes today. But no HD camera still, so look at me trying to dive bomb. Which thing was that? That one. I should put this right over here so I'm ready to hit the next one. Because it's going to stop right there, and then this is going to be our next... For the next uh, 40, oh, here we go, 40, for the next 12 minutes, we'll see how this flight goes. So I'm a pretty boring pilot, I guess. This is probably so boring, I can see why no one watches with me. <laughs> but I love this, though, for me, it's like, as close as I can get. Oh, there we go. There we go. It's the closest I can get to flying a real plane. Now, this is this weird thing that happens. Look at how many frames it dropped. Did you see that? Let's watch the time. 26, 27, 8, 9, 31, blah, 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 blah. Yep. It skips a whole bunch of seconds there. A whole bunch of frames whole bunch of frames. There I go for another loop. I'm starting to get the hang of looping without losing the L attitude. You can see if you watch the horizon, I can compare it to the arrow, this arrow, and you see how much the horizon dips above and below the arrow. You can see how much your nose is going up and down while you're turning. And the idea is if you're going to do a nice, whoops, a nice coordinated turn. Up oh, there it goes again. If you're going to do a nice coordinated turn, that you would. I'm going to turn off the desktop audio now, all the way down to zero. It would do a nice coordinated turn. The arrow would stay at the same position from the horizon, depending on your attitude. I love this view here with the river. Oh, but then I change it. 
<laughs> I love this view too. I love looking out the side. I have another plane with a gimbal. I'm looking forward to maidening that someday when I'm someday this spring. I'm waiting for the right batteries. I've ordered some batteries. And they're out of stock, so I have to either cancel the order, I think, or fix it, do something. And I'm doing one of these dives where I come down from seemingly nowhere, I feel like, and then passing us. Oh, there was a little airplane, one of our air, that was probably Kevin flying as um, Optera. Now that turn isn't too bad. I maintained a pretty good attitude in that turn. I like just doing this and critiquing myself. I learned from watching the DVR. I need to also watch the HD footage if I ever get some. I would love to have some HD footage. I have several HD cameras, so there's no reason for me not to get my act together. This is so boring, I'm sure, for everybody. Oh, there. Oh, didn't quite maintain the attitude on that loop. I did. I do point myself up when I try to do those rolls because I know I'm going to start dropping the nose in the middle of the roll. So look at the RSSI here. I mean, I'm right down there. And the RS is I'm right overhead, and it's still less than 90. So you can see why R9 is not does not compare to Crossfire. I mean, maybe the way they're counting RSSI is different, and Crossfire is really link quality. And I don't know if I can get link quality up on the screen there, but. I watched this guy, I think it's JB Copter YouTube channel. And he's running crossfire and he sends his wing out and it just stays. I'm doing a fly right over my head. I went right over my head, right over my car. Um, anyway, and he, he's, his RSSI stays 99 at 99. Oh, there's the Optera right in front of me. Do you see it? No white blurb going by. Too bad we didn't have HD, huh? I'm going to do HD. I'm going to do some stuff. I'm going to get like a 360 camera too sometime. I really am going to get my act together. I like doing this YouTube stuff. And some people have told me, like Timeless Truths, that they appreciate my shit. So if one person appreciates it, maybe there'd be more. If I get my act together. And this just sure is so much fun. I'm just, oh, there's the cops. You can see that's a cop car. At least you can see enough to see that. I just, it's pretty cool that we can do this. When I first got into the hobby in 2014, and I saw people doing FPV, and then I saw OSD, the telemetry. That was like, that was the dream of mine. And this is the dream, making a flight like this. I mean, it's not, I know it's not that great. Flying, the plane isn't that great. It's made out of Dollar Tree foam board, but still. There are issues with this control, flight control board. The items, like you notice that there's no time down here. It's disappeared. 
because it's in a warning state or something. And even though I've turned off every warning, I thought shit still goes into a warning state and then disappears. So, as I said, this was almost coming to an end here. We tore apart my INAV Explorer tail boom construction, how boring that was, and then we watched this flight. That's all we're doing today. And I think I'm about to come in for a landing. Coming in. Yep, here we go. I'm going to land right at my feet. Almost. That wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad at all. I mean, see how long it takes me to disarm. So, we'll look at the stats here if it ever comes up. And 10 meters. Yeah. Is it 10 meters? Did you see the altitude came back? Shit just disappears and reappears. So this is the F411 WSE board. You can also see that the temperature starts going up here. I'm coming up to it. And I always turn on the side camera. I guess I forgot. There we go. And then disarm. Yeah. So let's look at the stats here for one second. We've got a couple more minutes left in the stream. And we did manage to get the little foam board beast up to 108 kilometers per hour and over half a kilometer away. Again, I wasn't going for distance, obviously. I was just zipping around in mostly in air mode, trying to get a feel for what it's like to fly in air mode. And... Um, let's see what else did we do? 122 meters, that's good. 400 feet there, folks. 400 feet. 30 amps. I always seem to max out at about 30 amps on my planes. 326 watts. Used up. I have a 2200, so that's about 80%. And let's see what the voltage is. Oh, I don't have voltage on the screen, which is really stupid. 16 minutes. 16 minutes. 126 milliamp hours per kilometer. 126 milliamp hours per kilometer. Min battery volt. There it is. 10.4 volts. So that's pretty good, isn't it? Somebody tell me. Okay, so that's it. That's all I have for today. I mean, what else do we have here? What's this one? 110. Is that the one I just played? I think it is. Oh no, this is Andy. Should we look at Andy? This is Andy's flying. There's no sound. So this is his AR wing. And this is, must be on, you can see how much browner it is. So this is probably in March. in horizon mode. I like his font. I wonder what font that is. He's like, does always does cool stuff. Is he going to land it? I don't know. Oh, we're at one hour, folks. Okay, so here is a nice flyby by Andy. This is pre-pandemic, I can tell, because we're like not 20 million feet apart. You can see the side of his AR wing right there. What's he doing? I don't know. Going crazy. Anyway, 
that's all I've got to say. And uh, I'm just going to switch scenes here and wish you all a really good evening and a fine, fine Monday.